We're going to take a look at how we can use Advanced Themas Framework to be able to use this and control how our CSS grid layouts actually work using the flexibility that we have by using CSS variables. Now, if you're new to working with variables and classes and things like that, check out this video here. That's going to give you a good solid primer on the concepts behind what we're going to cover in this video. So let's take a look at what we're going to be starting off with, and then we're going to go through the process of using CSS Grid and the various variables we have available to us inside Advanced Themas Framework to get a little bit more creative with our layout. So this is what we have. It's a typical loop of posts with an image, a featured image, a title, and a little bit of text. Something you create on a very regular basis in most websites. Looks terrible at the moment, some nice images and so on, but we can make it look a lot better. Now, if we jump over into Bricks, I've got Advanced Thema installed, and I've also got the Advanced Thema Framework enabled. If you don't know how to do that, simply go to the AT menu at the top, open that up, access the AT Framework, and inside there, you can choose what you want to enable and disable. I've got all the global CSS variables, some basic colors, some basic classes, and the theme styles enabled, but you can choose to enable or disable whatever you want. As a bare minimum, though, you do want to make sure you've got all the CSS variables enabled just to follow along with what I'm going to do. Now, if you want to see what those variables are, make changes to them and so on, and this is where the flexibility of working with the framework really comes in, we can access those inside Bricks itself. There's two ways you can do it. The less flexible way, which is to simply use the native classes and variables function in Bricks itself, and that will still give you access to all of the different variables that you have as part of Advanced Themas Framework. You can see them all listed down the left-hand side, and you can click and take a look at the various different variables, and that's okay. But if we use the native function in Advanced as Thema, that gives us a lot more control. So let's close out of this, and we use the keyboard shortcut to access this, which is Control, Command, and V, and you can see that opens up the Variable Manager. If you prefer to use the options on screen, simply come to the AT menu, and from there, choose the Variable Manager from the list of options. It'll take you into the same thing. Now, if you've ever used a framework like Core Framework, for example, this is going to feel familiar, even if it looks a little different. You effectively have all the different definitions on the left-hand side, so your grids, your spacing, and so on. And then inside the main panel, you'll see the actual values associated with those variables and the variable names. You don't need to understand this too much to kind of start using it, but at least if you know where they are and how they fundamentally work, if you want to make changes, you can do, and you have an understanding of how it works. So let's take a look at our grids, which is what we're going to focus on primarily in this video. There's all our different grid variables. So our AT grid, one, two, three, four, and so on. This tells us how many different columns we're going to have. So one column, two columns, so on and forth. Then it'll use the different values we have to set that up using the min max and setting this to one fraction. Then we've got two, three, four, and so on. So this is using best practice when it comes to handling how we want the grid to lay out. Obviously, you could easily just use these and put these values directly inside the Bricks editor. But working with the framework gives you one source of truth. If you want to make a change, you come in here, make that change, and everywhere that references it will change accordingly. It's much more flexible. Then we've got special grids, which we'll take a little look at in a moment. These are slightly different layouts. So you can see a 1-2 layout, a 2-1 layout, 1-3, and so on. Visually, this basically means you've got one larger, one smaller column. So you can see one fraction, two fractions. You get the idea. They're different layouts. Then we've got the auto grids option. If you make any changes, please do make sure you save to the database. So we've taken a look at the variable manager and how this gives you more control over our grids and all the other variables. Let's take a look now at how we can start to utilize these in our design. Now, if you're finding value in this video, why not go down and hit that thumbs up button to tell YouTube you enjoy this kind of content. While you're down there, why not also hit that subscribe button to be notified when new content is added. But if you're not getting value, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with this video. So we're into bricks, and this is my layout. Let me quickly break down how it's set up so you know what I'm doing. We've got a grid container, and this is basically the container that'll contain the different cards, and each of those cards is part of an overall loop, so we're just simply using a simple query loop to show posts. Nothing more than that. Obviously, you don't have to use a loop inside you. You could just have a bunch of cards, which is basically just a, a, a block container that contains an image, some text, and a little bit of other information inside there. If we expand that out, you can see that's all it is. So we've got that all set up. We're looping through it, and we've got our basic layout, which looks absolutely rubbish. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our grid container. I'm going to come over to the left-hand side, and we're going to change the display over to grid. 
and absolutely nothing changes because we haven't set any definitions on how we want the grid to actually display. So first things first, let's go and set our columns up. We'll come back to the gap in a moment. If you click on the variable symbol, this will open up the advanced theme of framework. And as you can see, things are broken down into each of the different components. If you go back into the CSS variable manager, you can see it's the same groupings we have here in a lot of cases, grids, spacing, gap, and so on. Grids, spacing, gap, you get the idea. So what we've got now is three sets of options. We've got columns, so we can choose exactly how many columns we want inside our design. There's our special grids, which we took a look at just now, and then there's our auto grids and so on. So let's start off with the basics. Grid columns, choose two, just hover over, you'll see now that puts it into two columns and however many rows we need to take into account how many different items we have on you, whether it's a loop or you put different items in. Three, you can see it changes it. So let's set this to be three on here. So now we've got a three column grid. And as you can see, things are broken down into three columns, in this example, three rows to display the eight different cards we have. Now, let's go back to our, our gap because at the moment everything is just sort of closed up together and it looks terrible so we can do the same thing again click the variables option this time it jumps into the spacing option because it's context aware which is pretty nice and inside here you've got your different spacing options so we can easily choose what spacing we want and as you can see as we hover over we get a preview of exactly what this is going to look like before we commit it also has a little pop-up that'll show you the values being used we've got a scale here because we're using fluid layered so it'll go from 34 pixels pixels wide to 68 pixels wide, depending upon the screen resolution and so on. So in this example, I think small looks pretty good, which is a 10 to 20 pixel gap, but you could obviously go for whatever you want. Actually, medium looks a bit better. Let's choose that. So now we've set up our grid using variables part of advanced themas framework. This is great. And on our desktop, it all looks pretty nice. Let's switch over to the tablet portrait. And okay, doesn't look too bad. It's still okay. Now let's go to mobile landscape and things are starting to look a little bit squished up. Go to a mobile portrait and things look absolutely terrible. We can address this super easily. Let's say we want to change over on the tablet portrait to a two column layout. Well, all we need to do is make sure we've got that breakpoint selected, come over, and as you can see, we still have the three column layout variable inside you, but it's grayed out, which means it's falling back to that because we're using the sort of cascade in CSS, but we can override it. So let's click that variable option, and this time let's just set this to be two. So now we've set that to be two on tablet, three on desktop, and if we go over to mobile landscape, it's still two, and mobile portrait is now two. Because again, like I say, the cascade is going up to the tablet portrait, which is set a value there that's different to our desktop. So if we go back to our mobile landscape, and on here, let's say we want to change this over now to be a single column, you'll see now that will then cascade down to our actual mobile portrait. And again, any other values you want to change here, you may say you want to have different spacing for the different breakpoints. So you may say it's perfectly fine to have the medium on desktop, but on a tablet, we want to go for a small gap. Well, set that to be small. And you see, again, that will cascade down based upon the different cascade that we have set at the different breakpoints. Hope that all makes sense. So let's quickly save this and check it out inside our browser. Okay, so inside our front end, you can see there's our three column layout. Let's open up our inspector. Let's set this to be responsive mode. And now you can see we're on our portrait for phone. Go a little larger. You can see things fluidly scale. So it doesn't matter what resolution we have on our phone. They're going to look good. When we go up then, you'll see we now jump over to the tablet. Gives us our two column. Go a bit further up. And now we're back into our desktop, which gives us our three column layout. So we've got a nice fluid layout. Pretty nifty. But that's a bit of work. We've now got to set four different breakpoints. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you just want to have a sort of click it, set it, forget it, and move on. Well, we do have that inside Advanced Theme Framework. So let's just clear this out. Now clear it from here and make sure we've cleared it from all the different breakpoints. So now we have no variables set for our grid template. The only thing that's set is our spacing, which is fine. So this time, let's again come and choose our variables. But this time, let's go and take a look at our auto grids. Auto fit and auto fill are effectively doing the same kind of thing. And our column min width, as you can see, that's set here. So these are the values we're currently working with. So now if we say auto fit, that's going to say, well, at this particular screen size, I think 
four columns is fine based upon that 270 pixel width that's been set. So now if we go down to the tablet portrait, it goes to three columns. We'll go over to mobile landscape, it goes to two, and we go to mobile portrait, it goes to one. So we've only had to set one value inside here, which is the auto fit option. And again, if we come in and make changes, so for example, let's say you want to change this from 270 and let's just set this to be something like 350. We'll save to our database. And you see when we come back into our layout, now instead of being four columns, because we set the minimum width to be larger, now 350 pixels instead of 270, we now have three columns instead of four. Switch over, two, two, and one. So you can see how easy it is and how flexible it is. And imagine now you had 15 different templates and half a dozen pages that were all set up using that exact same layout, using the same variables. If we come back in to our settings inside our variable manager, we can make a change here and it'll be reflected everywhere. So let's set this to something crazy like 150. Save to our database, that's updated. Come back into our layout, and as you can see now, we get lots and lots of columns because it looks terrible, but we've set it to such a small size. Let's reset that, save to our database. Okay, so we've now seen how we can work with some basic layers, but what if we want to get a little bit more creative? Well, this is where we can start to use some of the other variables. So again, let's just clear this out, and let's go back to what we started off with. We'll leave the gap in there again, but let's choose this time the different variable options we've got for our special grids. So you can see now we can set a one, two. The first column is gonna take up one fraction, the second column is gonna take up two fractions. In other words, one third, two thirds, exactly what you can see. Then we've got the reverse opposite. You've got a one, three, or a three, one. So you've got some different kind of creative layouts here, but this is just getting started. You can obviously create your own variables. So if we go back in, you can see we can create our own scales. So we've got grid columns, for example. These are kind of groupings, your special grids, your group names, and so on. If you want to add a new one in, you can simply use the option up here to create a new scale. You can also come in and add additional options inside here. So you could say, for example, you've got this 3, 1. You could change that and create something completely new. All you need to do is click to add a new variable in, give it a name, make sure you kind of follow the same convention, fill out the relevant information, and then make whatever changes you need here to get the custom layout that you want. So this is a good demonstration of how you can use the advanced theme of framework, use the grid functionality, and and get creative with how you lay things out. You've got the basics, you've got more flexibility, and you've also got the ability to easily expand this to create your own custom variables, add those into the framework, get those directly built into the ATF kind of picker, so you have a lot of flexibility, all using fundamentally native functions inside Bricks itself. Now, as always, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.